Jake. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Do not adjust your internet. It is, in fact, nearly 10.30 here on the Pacific Coast. So what the fuck are we doing on? Well. That's, that's 1.30 in the morning for those of you on the Eastern Time Zone. Indeed. Well, I'll tell you what the fuck I'm doing on it. And about 3.30 for the nice NA stars. Indeed. I'll tell you what the fuck I'm doing up at 10.30 at night <laughs> on the internet right now. And that is because I'm going to review slash walk through the Star Trek Exploring New Worlds 50th Anniversary Expedition Expedition Exhibition here in Seattle right now at the Experience Music Project Museum. I, I went to go see it on uh, this past Sunday. I took pictures of everything, and I'm going to be sharing them with you good folks on the interwebs while also telling you what I thought about it and my experiences. Joining me for this walk through Star Trek Memory Lane, we have two, prof two, uh, the two, two of the biggest Trekkies here on Pez of the Mind. Unfortunately, Chris the Mole cannot be with us. We have, from the east coast of the United States of America, James Phoenix. Live long and prosper. Indeed. And then we have, from the land down under, Aeon. I thought it was Aeon Rider. Klingon Ma! <laughs> Only when he's reviewing Tokusatsu. Klingon Ma! Kapla! And I like to know if it's Riders, it's Aeon Rider. If it's Rangers, it's Aeon Ranger. We lost Jim. Other uh, side. Click on. Meh. <laughs> nice. And yeah, where did Aeon go? Ah, he's right there. There you are. I saw his logo for a minute there. I'm still here. I did not. Fair enough. Anyway. What's uh, happening? Yes, I don't speak Klingon, so yeah. I'm this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this exhibit, it wasn't an overly huge exhibit, but it's it was big enough. Um, and everything, exhibit, all the props and stuff that were in it, came uh, directly out of Paul Allen's private collection, which is why it was in Seattle, because he fucking lives up here and owns the Seattle Seahawks. Hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was part of it. Do we want to explain to the audience and then who the fuck that is? It's Paul Allen. He was – I don't know if he founded it, but he was there in the early days. Um, he was basically partnered with Bill Gates at Microsoft, and he made his millions, got out. And then after the Seattle Mariners went and bought their own piece of land and built their own stadium, Paul Allen then bought the Seattle Seahawks and the kingdom with it, tore the kingdom down, and built what is now Quest Field and a joining parking lot. So, yeah, he owns the Seahawks, and he has quite a sizable Star Trek collection. I'm pretty sure what was in the museum was probably only a fraction of what he actually owns. But, yes, so that, that was Paul Allen. <laughs> so... We'll go ahead and begin here. Basically, he's the tech behind Microsoft. Bill Gates the thing. What was that? And that's coming from the tech of the group. Paul Allen, the actual Bill Gates, was a marketing genius. Like, oh, I don't know. Steve Wozniak was the technical genius behind Apple, and Steve Jobs was a marketing genius behind Apple. Hey. So let's see. It's uh, right here. Alrighty, so we'll start with the stairs leading up to the main exhibition hall. Boom. Bam. See them? And if you can't tell, those are gold ships of the line. I'm assuming those are the ships that were probably in Picard's ready room, my guess. Could be. 
most likely, because that looks well, to well, be the uh, yeah, 1701 well, top or the 1701 A. Yeah, it depends, because on the D, they were in the ready room. On the E, they were in the observation lounge. No, I'm pretty sure the E was in the ready room, because Picard fucking destroyed them right. with his Type 3 phaser rifle when, when fucking Lily pissed him off. Yeah, and they were in the observation lounge. I don't think they were in his ready room. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was his ready room. My bad. But yeah, that's the D, the A, and the E. Okay. We don't hear much about the A. I wish we knew more about the A. What's what's there to know? It got decommissioned after Star Trek VI. I know. The but it's the rape it of the 1701. I know, yeah. but I feel, like they, I feel like they could have done more with the A. It seemed like a cop-out. Yeah. Oh, well. It's like, no, we need, we need to... <laughs> No, no, we need to commission a new one, and we need to hire the doofy best friend for Ferris Bueller to pilot it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll move in, and I think Jim will love this, because we're okay. moving straight into shit he loves. Well, he loves all Star Trek, but this, this stuff specifically. Okay. Let's see how much of this Jim can identify. Okay, I'll do the best I can of these tiny pictures. Okay. Let's see. That's a uniform from one of the movies. Wrong. DS9? Correct. Okay. They use the same uniform. Cut me some slack. Um... In the latter in the latter seasons, because in the in the original mm -hmm. DS Nine seasons they were uh, DS Nine seasons they were using the black on the bottom, solid color on top uniforms, and then around season three of DS Nine they switched to the Star Trek movie uniforms because the movie uniforms have had such a huge hit. Right, but look at the uniform; it's a specific uniform. Is it really small for you guys? It's kind of tiny. Yeah, it's hard to see. Shit. No, I, 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 I can tell. I can tell that it's, I can tell that it's a vest uniform. But. All right, you know I what? I'm going to do this. Cisco I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm going to do by this. The picture yeah, yeah the I can see a tiny picture, picture of Cisco. Here, I'm going to do this. I didn't want to have to do that, but I'll do this. Is that better? Yes, yeah. yeah, that's definitely a picture of Cisco. Yes, that is Cisco's uniform. Okay. It was worn by Cisco. That's he why it's a vest uniform. uniform. He's the only that's one Aver who wore a vest. That's David Brooks, for those of you who don't know at home. Yes. Moving on, you can oh, probably see it in that good. shot, but it's right next to Cisco. Okay. Ooh, a Ferengi Marauder. That is a Decora class Marauder. You are correct. That is one of the actual <laughs> models they used for the show, for you know, flying the ship around in space and shit. Nice. That's always yeah. cool. Yeah, all the ships you'll see. Uh, the models Ooh. ships you'll see throughout this walkthrough, they were all production models. Nice. Nice. Moving on, let's see if Jim knows what this is. Okay. <coughs> it's a black... Um, I read the sign. I'm trying to read the sign. It's very small and very blurry. That is the dark orb of possibilities. Ah. Dark Orb of the Prophets? Correct. Oh, nice. I thought, that was pos I thought that was Prophets, not Possibilities. Yeah. Well, the Prophets all, all, were there. Real life taught you all the orbs were orbs of the Prophets. They were collectively the orbs of the Prophets, but each orb of the Prophets had a specific name. This one was the Orb of Possibilities. Dark Orb of Possibilities, just the Mirror Universe one. Oh, well, the, right, because of the Mirror Universe, right. That doesn't make it dark, that just makes it from the other universe. As has been well demonstrated in the show and the novels, the other universe isn't evil, it's just different. Right. Now, moving on to another series. Let's see if either of you recognize what's in this photo. Okay. Okay, let's see here. That's a Wait, phaser. That is, a, that is not a phaser. That's not a phaser, okay. Looks like a phaser. Close. Disruptor? That's Enterprise here, I think. Yes, that is a phaser pistol. Ah. And yes, Enterprise. that is a pad sitting next to it. Yes, it is Enterprise. Can you identify 
the, the rifle on the left. I feel like I've seen Picard. I feel like I've seen I feel like I've seen Picard holding that rifle. No. This is Enterprise, remember? Oh, so the whole thing is Enterprise? This is Enterprise. This is in the Enterprise booth. This is uh, from the show Enterprise or the Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen that, so I have no That's idea. Why there's a face You should know what it is. You've seen it before. I have. You have. Okay. Any guesses, Aeon? It's, is it to do with the Sphere Builder and Egg Group? The what? The Sphere Builders? The Sphere Builders. I can't quite remember the actual name for them. I just remember. No, they're, they're, that, that is the actual Sphere they, Builder. That is the, the actual The guys name. that made those size and spin the one. Yeah, they're called the Sphere Builders. That's what they were called. They didn't get another name until, uh, <laughs> until the STL. You're close. That's a Zindi rifle. Oh. That's the word I was trying to pick up. I think it's, it's not Zilnaga. No, yeah, that's, that's a Zindi bio rifle. rifle. Yeah, but the Zindi aren't the Sphere Rollers. That's two different races. Yeah, that's why I said he was close. <laughs> but yes, that is a Zindi rifle. Please bear with us, people. This is going to be long because there's a lot of pictures. Um, okay. So we're moving on to this. All right, what do we got? Okay, let's see here. Obviously, well, the one on the right is obviously an Enterprise uniform. That's I don't know what the one on the left Enterprise. is. still Enterprise. It is, yes. Oh, that's T'Pol's uniform. That is T'Pol's uniform. The one on the right is Archer's uniform. The yeah. One is that is Archer's uniform, yes. Yeah. yeah, now, Archer's, I mean, uniform, yeah. Archer's uniform the, uh, looks a little red. weird because the reflection off the mirror is making part of it look purple. His uniform is purple. It is? I know, it's a dark blue. That's it, what they want you to think. Remember, when they when you see it on TV, blue. it's lit differently. This is lit with pure light. It's purple. Okay then. Yeah, because remember when people when they make costumes, it's the costumes physically are not the colors you think they are. Yeah, they're usually not the full color you think they are. They're actually colored differently because when they light the sets, it changes the color it looks like on film. Okay then. Yeah. Uh, example, the gold uniforms from the original series. What color are they actually? Oh, I think they were more green. Yeah, okay. Yellow I green, can see I that. Continue. Indeed, it also depends because on what color the, the, the film. The film. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. The cellular film also played a part into it. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to – I should have said this at the beginning, but to all of you checking this out on the interwebs and for Aeon over there, um, some of these photos are going to be blurry because I was in there with a lot of people, and I didn't look at all the photos after I took them. I probably should have, and I didn't, so I apologize for that. I was just trying to take pictures and move on, so I wasn't in people's way. In all, in all fairness, the photos are blurry anyway. You're using Minicam. Fair enough. So, moving on. No longer on Enterprise. Let's see if you recognize this. Everyone should recognize this. Go ahead, get to a show we might actually know. I can... <coughs> ah, it's a Gorn. That is a Gorn. That is the Gorn. <laughs> yeah. That is the Gorn that got the shot with the cannon Gorn. that should have killed Kirk. Kirk for. Yeah. And no, no, let's 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 not be, you know, let's let's give credit where credit is due here. Jax is the Gorn. I should have blind them both. <laughs> All right. So, I'm sure everyone will recognize this one. Mm-hmm. Once it loads, <laughs> it's a board cube. That is a board cube. cube. Which leads me to a one weird. Yeah. Oh, I guess that makes sense. That, that pisses me off. You're gonna put a board cube, and it's gonna because I can see the reflection of the word "void" in the freaking window. It's like really, freaking. You're gonna put the board cube or "voyager" not one from next gen. What the hell? No, that's because the "voyager" one was behind me. Oh. Um, Remember, it's a reflection. It's reflecting on what it's looking at. Gotcha. It's the a board, uh, the board cube was in the board section. Fair enough. 
And for the record, <laughs> that was a fucking oh, massive. Of course. Uh, of course. That was a fucking massive. Uh, uh, I'm sure it was. Cube. Now the biggest question is: Is it the one with the section cut out of it that the Enterprise ripped off in its first appearance? No, it's a full cube. Okay. Yeah, it was a huge model. Mm. Again, keep in mind these are all production models, so they are all huge. Oh yeah, I'm sure they are. So I believe I, I, I believe I heard they had the fully restored D in there, didn't they? They uh, we they do have the D in here. Yes, we'll be getting to that. Yeah, because I remember reading a thing where they fully restored the D for I'm either for that D. or for the one here in New York, one of the two. All right, so we're going into. Oh, oh! Uh, you know what cube that is? What cube is that? You should figure it out when I show you the next image. I didn't. I forgot that it was this exhibit. Okay. That should tell you which cube it is. <coughs> oh. You know what that I mean, is? Slide. Yes, that's the that's uh, Zephyr Cochran's ship, the Phoenix. That is the Phoenix. Yes. So it's contact. Yeah, so that's, so the, that's the first contact cube. That's the one they fucking blew up when the before the, when the sphere ejected out of it. Fair enough. That'll work. So yeah, that's the Phoenix. That's cool. Oh, hold on! Don't change that picture. Yes, boss. That's look, look right at this picture. That's what I'm talking about. The thing on the stand there. That's the section of the Enterprise that was cut out when the Borg cube lanced into it in the first appearance. Oh. That thing on the on the metal stand right there. On the left. Okay, that's in the first the first time the Borg ever the first time the Borg ever appeared on the show when Q threw them out into space and they met the Borg and they encountered them and they had a back and forth. The Enterprise tried to fight the Borg and the Borg locked them in a tractor beam, fired some kind of a, 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 a either a phaser or disruptor whatever the Borg used, fired it at them and used it to slice a circular hole in the section of the Enterprise hull. And it took that. It took that section out with a tractor beam to examine it. And as you can see, it took a section of about three decks with it. Nice. And that, that was, I remember I've seen them show that off at exhibits before. Is that's the section of the the decks that they used to cut out? Because <coughs> um, they actually basically had to build that separately, insert it into a model so that it could be pulled out. That makes sense. So I guess Paul Allen acquired it somehow. That's a cool prop. Good but day. I also love that the Phoenix has. You know, it's. Yeah. Exploding out of it. I think that's kind of cool. Yep. All right. So. Yeah. Also, to backtrack for a few seconds. Yes. When would. Yeah. Backtracking to the uniforms. The actual yes. color of the original series uniform was lime green and only appeared gold under the lights. That, that makes sense. Thing. There you go. Learn something new every so, day. Yeah. That, that's the difference. Indeed. You may continue, and Marcus. If color correct technology is five, come on, nothing at all. Anyways, continue. Indeed. This you all, you both should recognize. Okay. <coughs> it's right. It's very nice. That is a compression rifle. Yes. Sweet. Now, are those the ones for first contact? I think so. It was in the same. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. And then that's probably that's probably Picard's rifle. Aren't you coming? I have a friend I left behind. I have to go help him. Saddle up, lock and load. Load. Let's see if you guys recognize this. All right. That's a Borg head. That's actually actually that's Locutus's head. He is Locutus. Locutus a Borg. That's also his arm. Mm. Yes, I see the po I see the poster. <laughs> yeah. So he actually has Locutus's face. Cut. That's kind of cool. That oh, I bet that's the model. I bet that's the model they used when they showed the clip of them inserting the giant needle into his eye when they were transforming him. Possibly. And obviously, that's the arm that they attached onto Patrick Stewart's actual Most arm. Most likely. Yeah. We have this. I thought this was kind of cool. Yeah. There we go. My God, you're fat. <laughs> yes, and yes, I And that's why the that's why the regeneration chambers. I'm yeah. going to bet it's from Voyager. Yep. 
Yep, they put the chamber up there, and you can step into it and take a photo with it, so I did. Yeah, because I don't think they actually introduced the uh, regeneration chambers of that design until Voyager. True. And that's most likely either Seven's regen chamber or one of the other ones that were in the uh, cargo bay on Voyager. Yeah. Actually, how many... Was that the only one there, or were there actually others next to it, Jeff? Jeff. Whatever. That was the only one there. Well, actually, that's not true. Okay. There was also this one. Okay. Which had an actual Borg in it. Yes, it did. <laughs> and you are correct. That is the Voyager, well, first contact stroke nice. Voyager design Borg. Nice. You mean the, we finally have a budget for this, Borg? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of, you all recognize this. <coughs> ah, Janeway. That is Janeway's tunic, yes. Captain, yeah, Captain Catherine Janeway. I see that's her chair. That must be her chair next to her. Yep. That is, in fact, her chair next to her. I never, I never liked, I never liked the concept of the Voyager Bridge. It's why I don't use it in STO because you got the two chairs, and neither one of them is distinguished as to being the captain's versus commander's chair. Even though I know Jamie always sat on the left, I never liked that design. I always liked the design where the captain was in the center and had a commander and someone else around them. Fair enough. And sticking with Voyager, and I apologize for this. This one kind of got motion blurred, but you should make out what it is. The motion blur. It's Seven's uniform. That is Evans. That's her original uniform, yeah, the blue one. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm partial to the silver one. Leotard. Person. Yeah, I'm partial to the silver one, but yeah, that's the blue one. That's her original. That's not a leotard. That's a unitard. That is a unitard. A leotard does not have legs. And let's move on from honorless mechanoids to beings about nothing but honor. There we go. Let's see. That's a bird of prey and Klingon Wrong. disruptors and the dagger. That is not a bird of prey. It's not a bird of prey. That's a battle cruiser. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the uh, dagger that goes with the Atlas. Yep, I believe that's a D7 cruiser. Um, yeah, that's the nice. ceremonial dagger. Yeah. Um, Klingon disruptor on the right, and I'm not sure what the big ass one on the left is. I don't know. Um. I'm I'm almost wondering. I don't know what the one on the left is. Obviously, it's a, it's a larger Klingon weapon. But um, I'm wondering that one on the right. I'm wondering if that is the Klingon disruptor assembled uh, out of the pieces in their boots by the two Klingon prisoners that were on the epi on the Enterprise in the in the break when they escaped in that one episode in uh, Next Gen. It's possible. If that could be the one on the left, because the one on the left looks like it could be one that could be taken apart. Um, no, because it was only a small handheld weapon. It wasn't a large weapon like that, I don't think. Fair enough. I could be wrong. Yeah, ceremonial dagger. Nice. Continue. But yes, that is a Klingon battle cruiser. Um, ah. Ah. Cake. Indeed. All right. Okay, then. We have this. <coughs> nice. Full Klingon battle gear. Just random Klingon. That's, also, um, that's not battle gear. Well, his uniform. It's a Klingon uniform, but notice the two uh, drapings over the shoulders. That's Klingon ceremonial garb for a variety of, of specialty Klingon ceremonies. Fair enough. Specifically, I, I recall Worf wearing that and at the... Um, I, I believe Worf wore that during the uh, the ceremony where he had to go and defend his father's honor. I think he wore that. Fair enough. Oh no, wait. You know what? You know what that is? I remember now. I remember where I saw that uniform. That, that's the uniform that Worf wore when he had to pretend to be the captain of the Enterprise during that episode where they found the Klingon ship that had been asleep for like a hundred years and they didn't know the war was over. And Worf had to wear that and pretend to be the captain of the Enterprise under Klingon control to convince them to go to a Klingon outpost in order to find out what the hell was going on so they wouldn't shoot at them and start a war. Fair enough. 
Yeah, I remember, to I, the... I remember I recognized those long drapes from somewhere. That was Worf's captain's uniform when Kevlar was posing as the commander. Okay, because according to the um, tag that was on you, know, the, the placard, it was uh, saying it was worn by various Klingons. Okay, well, that, I know Worf wore it in that one episode. I'm sure others wore it around town. Because you know? if you take Fair the shoulder things off, it's just regular Klingon armor that they all yeah. wore. It's just the shoulder things that make it unique. Indeed. Then we have these. Yeah. And okay. that ship in the previous slide, the knife and whatnot, that was the D7 Battlecruiser. And um, I legitimately have no idea what those are. The one on the left is a Klingon pad. The one on the right is a tricorder. The tricorder is larger? That's a Klingon tricorder. Why is a tricorder larger than a pad? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know, but that's what the sign said. Okay, then. Uh, probably issues with miniaturization of technology for the tricorder compared to the pad on the Klingon homeworld and whatnot. Could be. Then we have this. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, the Master Chest piece, of course. Bat nice. And a Klingon mask. Yep. That's cool. Then, and I'm not going to show all of these, but this would have been helpful to have, oh, end of last year. Oh, where do you put load? Protagonist. Who is the hero of the episode? The person or group who faces the challenges. Yes, they had a wall of how to write a Star Trek episode. And again, as mentioned before this recording, I'll do one better. I've got a fucking <laughs> next <gen> writer's guide. <laughs> so I took photos of all of it. I've got a, I've got, I've got a next gen writer's guide. I bet it has the same thing and more. Maybe. We'll go over that after the recording, but continue. Yeah, but it's basically the thought processes of what questions you ask yourself when you're putting an episode together. That's so pretty cool. I don't cool. Like that. Them. And I'll go through all of them, but that's cool. I'll show them to you later if you want to see them. Yeah, that's fine. So, you should all recognize this uniform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why not Lloyd's? God! God! Correct. Now, they also... <laughs> Um, <laughs> next to this exhibit or near it, they had a little booth you could go into, and they had that um, scene playing of Khan, and you could recreate your own Khan. So as you're walking around, you hear people screaming out Khan in the in the uh, ex exhibition. Nice. It was kind of cool. Yeah, I didn't do that, of course, but. <laughs> But on the other side of the display case, we had this. And Jim's not paying attention. Sorry, I was looking at the writer's guide, but continue. Yes, on the other side of the case, we had this. That same display case. Uh, okay. Oh, that's other con. That is Benedict Cumberbatch, yes. So it was showing the evolution of Khan, which I thought was kind of cool. So it was a it was a Khan exhibit, basically. Nice. Well, and I, think in the middle, I think that. I, go ahead. I think at that point it was a John Harriman, but fair enough. And then in the middle of said Khan exhibit, between the two outfits, we had these weapons. Nice. No a phase and a phase pistol. What's that on the upper uh, thing? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of good you are. Did not notice that. Um, let me take a look. Let me get a larger view of it. Probably a communicator. That's what it looks like. Communication device, possibly a portable tele uh, teleporter control device. Yeah, I'm thinking that was Khan's teleporter control from uh, Into Darkness. Fair enough. Continue. Indeed. Now, going into my favorite series. Deanna Troy's uniform, nice. The, the original one, is it, or was the original one red? I can't remember which one came first. 
Well, her original her original uniform in the original episode, she was actually wearing a proper unif a proper uh, science uniform. Ah. So I can't remember which came first because there was a red version yeah. of this that she wore too. I can't remember which came yes, first. Yes, there was a red version that was later on. This was the earlier one. Um, Fair but enough. The, yeah, there was this one in the red version. But originally she was in a regular scientist blue uniform to start out with, and then a little while into the series, um, I can't remember if it was Ron Barry or Berman. I want to say Ron Barry, but basically they but basically they told the product they told the uh, the wardrobe crew to sex her up. Fair enough. We have that one. Then we have this one. There we go. Oh, that's a shitty season one uniform. Fuck that uniform. Oh, yeah, this is season one. You yeah. also know. Uh, you also know that the season one uniform is a unitard. Yes, it is. It's also so a piece of shit. Therefore, we did not have the Picard maneuver until they got the new uniforms. Yeah. No, that that uniform was god awful. That's one of the. That's one of those. When I first started watching Next Gen because I was just watching them all out of order as they heard on TNN. I basically I could always pick out which was which because I noticed the uniform differences, and I always noticed the ones with this uniform tended to suck more. Fair enough. Then because the earlier seasons are not as good. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a season one Jordan uniform. Because I was trying to get that footing. Yep, with the visor. Now you'll uh, notice. No wait, season two Jordan uniform. Sorry. Is it? Jordy, Jordy was in Jordy was in a uh, a Cranberry Command uniform on the oh, Britain's pilot right. of the first season. He didn't become right. the engineer and gain a uh, a tan uniform until season two. Good call, good call. Now you'll notice the um, dummy that the uniform is on is actually brown. Yes, it is. Normally in exhibits, and they made a point to point this out at the beginning of the exhibit. Normally, when they have clothing that they put on mannequins, um. They apply one mannequin color to all the mannequins to make it fit, you know, make it look good with all the clothing. But with this exhibit, they went out of their way to take the mannequins and make them all different colors to show the racial diversity of Star Trek. That's cool. Yeah, I thought that was a nice touch. And that's why Jordy is actually a black guy. Nice. Continue. Continuing. So let's see, go into, um, what is this? Ah, okay, so this, I don't know if I'm going to show the whole thing of, the, of this, but. Show us part of it. Ah, timeline, nice. They have a timeline of everything. And it, it was, they do. It was put together. Forever, it's on the minute, tomorrow it's recent. Yeah. Now, because I want to give them credit, because this was fucking awesome and must have taken forever to do. This timeline was designed by students from the Cornish College of the Arts. Good for them. Nice. That is impressive. So yeah, this is a totally legit timeline commissioned yeah. by yeah, when, Star Trek. When, yeah, when you're doing stuff like that, what you do is you take your phone and you hit the um oh what how do they call that? Optical stabilizer? No. That's where you take a, where you can take the photo and just go like this and keep taking the one long photo. Mm. Oh uh, that shit. Yeah, I didn't know this is a relatively new phone. I've never taken photos with this phone before. Well. Panorama. First shoot panorama. is probably what's called on different lines. Yeah, a, pan a panorama oh, shot is panorama. what they call it. But, but there's yeah. also a first. So. Continue. Continuing. And there are three <laughs> photos for this one thing. That's how big this thing is. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's the actual Enterprise Bridge. Nice. Kind of. there four lights. Ha! This is the original Enterprise. That is Kirk's Ooh. chair. That is Kirk's uniform on the right. That is McCoy's uniform on the left. Now, is that, is, is, now here's my question. Is that Kirk's actual chair? Yeah, that's his command chair. But is it the actual one from the show? Yes. Bullshit. No, it isn't. That one's in the Smithsonian. Well, it must be a second one from the show then. They mm. probably have multiples. Because the actual chair is in the Smithsonian, and the only time I've known to pull it out was Shatner's Roast. 
they, they should have to have multiples. Fair enough, because the thing on it says <laughs> chair, the chair, it was his command chair used in the TV show. So, Okay, maybe hey, there's another one, or maybe they got it on loan. Who knows? But that's maybe. cool. But that is Kirk's uniform on the right, McCoy's on the left. Um, that is a console from the bridge up front. Yep. I think that's Sulu's console, but I'm not sure. And then that is one of the. Uh, I mean, if, you look it. Clo- if you look closely, there's um because you have to remember on the original Enterprise there was only one long console. Okay. So that's the whole console. You'll see the chair on the left is probably where Chekhov was, and on the right would be where Sulu was. Fair enough. Because there was only one console on the on the bridge of the Enterprise. It's not like the T and onward when they split it into two separate consoles. It was one big console on the original Enterprise bridge. Fair enough. You've seen uh, the original. I haven't. How do you not know that? And I do. Hmm. Here's another shot of said console. Okay, flip it around. Uh, Boom! Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oops. That is pretty That's awesome. Wrong, I think. And then here is oh. Okay. Yeah, you can see here. Hang on, don't change that shot yet. You see how on the left where that section of that one chair is? That's what that's Chekhov station, and then the far away, the other part where it jets out on the other side of the Kirk mannequin, that's Sulu station. Fair enough. And then the I part where it's presented the mail is where Kirk is so well, or toward the view screen. It's funny you should mention the view screen. Oh, is it in that's the back? The next issue. Here's that's a the shot next from bottom. Here's yeah. a shot from the back. Nice. I was I walked around behind and took a shot because I wanted to because they had that central thing that that you see that like radar thing in the center and then they yep. had a, a TV up with the screen and it squished. I caught it with space. Um, they had an alternate screen showing a Tholian web. Nice. Yeah, ignore Ooh. the people. <coughs> you people are That's famous cool. now. You're on the interwebs. <laughs> Deal with it. Yep, basically. That's pretty cool. I thought that was cool. That, that, that was the centerpiece. That was in the center of yeah. the Although I always, I, always, I, I, I always thought the view screen was behind Uhura. The view screen was always on at the front of the ship. It's always been there. Okay. No, the view screen is always... Because there was another... Uhura had another had view screen back by her. facing the view screen. Yeah, because Uhura had another view screen back by her. I remember that in the show. I think that was the science station. I think that was Spock station. Yeah. Mm, science console. Maybe. And speaking of Spock, anyone recognize that? Because I think you have to. Uh, oh, that's um, that's Spock's mother. That is that is Amanda's dress from. Surf I was gonna Spock. Yeah, but um, because the thing you have to remember about the original series is there was supposed to be a view screen in the front, but they didn't actually have one. It wasn't until next gen. That they, when they were designing the bridge, they said, you know, we should set up an actual view screen so we could spin the camera around and see what they're seeing. Because they never did that in. They just showed the the bridge crew facing forward and then cut to just a full screen shot of the person talking to Kirk. Which is why they had a screen above with Uhura. So if they needed somebody to pop on the screen and address Kirk, they could have somebody pop on that screen behind because they did not have a frontal screen during the actual original series filming. Oh, that's true. They did have a comm screen above Uhura station now that I think about it. Yeah. They used that to show pictures of people, and then Kirk would say, put it on the main screen, and they would just cut back between the full screen of that and Kirk talking because they didn't have a frontal part of the set for that. It was just the cameras and shit. That's why it's a whole big deal if you ever watch the uh, special features about the construction of that the, – uh, the Enterprise-D bridge set for Next Gen. When they go over it, they specifically talk about how they set this whole big thing up. So that they could have this big frontal thing, they could put the big screen in there and show things on the screen, but then when it wasn't being used, they could roll the actual – because it was actually a, a pull-down projection screen. They could pull it up and put the cameras and things back there to film the bridge and just move them and pull the screen down when they needed the view screen because it was the first time they thought of how can we do this to be able to film and have a view screen when we need it. Fair it enough. Special design they did for that whole thing. It was really cool. I remember watching the, the, the special feature about how they made that. It was really cool. And for Voyager, they probably had two versions of the set. One way, the camera's at the view screen position, one behind the cast and crew. Right. Basically, 
one camera position, you're looking towards the view screen, the other, you're looking from the view screen. Yeah, exactly. Because that would be the easiest way for them to have done Voyager. Yeah, true. But staying with Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. And then, basically, pan the cameras around. But anyways. Is that Sarek's uniform? That is Sarek's clothes, yes. Yeah. From Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Yeah, I can't quite make it out. I was saying, okay, she look like you're about to have a seizure over there. <laughs> and then we have this one. No, it's just my eyes trying to focus on the uh, oh, okay. teal. That teal. one. I don't recognize who that is. Is that Spock's mom? No, that's not the Vulcan woman. Oh, is that the Vulcan is woman? That the Vulcan bitch? Is that the Vulcan woman at the Academy that, that was going to hire Spock to the Academy and then he told her to fuck off? No, that is T'Pau's robes. I don't know who that is. She's the one that put Spock back in his body. Oh, okay. Gotcha. The fact that I said Star Trek thing, the search oh, for Spock should have hinted you at it. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. The spiritualist. And then what Star Trek exhibit um, would be complete where is my... without that? Ah, Tribbles. And that is, in fact, a production <laughs> NCC-1701 on the top. I'm sure it is. Nice. So you can see just how how big the production models got when they finally got a fucking budget. Because yep. that was the yeah. original one. Yep. Um, okay. And so yeah. we're going to stick with the original series. Mm-hmm. Nice Spock's, Spock's uniform. uniform. That is Leonard Nimoy's uniform, yes. Nice, nice. That's cool. And we have... Keep them coming. I don't know what this is. Maybe you guys can identify it. Because the tag on it couldn't identify it. They just said it was some random console off the bridge. I'm wondering if that wasn't Spock's console, but I don't. I think, think that I think that might be Spock's a science console from the bridge. I think you're right. I don't know much of. I, I'm taking a shot in the dark. It looks like it. I don't know much about the original series, but I assumed it was either his or or, or uh, yeah, I assumed it was either his or hers because it was in the case with their uniforms. Fair enough. That makes sense. Speaking of which. There you go. The mini skirt and yeah. gaga boots. Never yeah, mind. Ah, nice. And then let's see how many of these you can identify. Okay, hang on. Let me switch back over. I was trying to find a picture of the find to identify that console. Hmm. Okay. Let's see here. What are these? Tricorder. Yeah, that, that's a tri No, that is a phaser. That is a Trunk 2 phaser. Yep. The thing in the center is that big, uh, basically what served as a pad that they would occasionally bring on the away missions. Yeah, the tricorder. No, the one of the... Oh, yeah, the one on the right is the communicator. I'm pretty sure that, yes. Yeah, that was the tricorder. Yeah, that's a tricorder, the one on the right is the communicator. Yeah. I was going center, then down. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know what the two on the top are, though. The upper right-hand corner, that's the medical scanner for the tricorder. Oh, okay. And the upper left, I think that's a hypo spray, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, that's then. A yeah, you have to yes, remember, that would be the high press, right? You have to remember, in the original That's series, it wasn't force. called a phase pistol. It was just a phaser. Right. Yeah. And, that, and actually, technically speaking, that's the phaser. That's a hand grip for the Type 1 card deck type True. phaser. And Jim should recognize this. But yeah, that top okay. left is the high press, right? 
Data and his cat. Yeah, but that's the good uniform. If you could see the uniform, it has the black across. Yeah, that's that's the lighter uniform. Yep, and it doesn't have that line of color in it. Yep, and that is Data's print of Spot, which, um, as an exclusive to the, uh, to the exhibit, if you go, if I went to the gift shop, I could have bought a print of Data's painting. Nice. Nice. Continue. We have. No, I didn't go far enough. Go far enough. Ah, Data's head. Yes, now can you tell me where Data's head is located? In the floor. Correct. Um, kind of hard to miss when your foot is in the shot. Yeah, yeah, they put Data's head in the floor. Well, that's kind of where it's supposed to be. It's where they found it in that cave. Pretty much. I'm assuming that's what it, it's from. That's the only time we've had a data head, and it looks like that data head, so. Except for when they had lore. Um, yeah, well, yeah, but those were separate are. pieces, and they were found in, They were all found in a, in a, a suit containment unit where Dr. Sung left them. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've had a data head, before head, and a lore head. Yeah. What the hell? Hey, it's a Romulan Warbird. That's, that is, yes. That is the Warbird. It is a Diderotex class Warbird. Nice. Production model. Yep. Now. And those are fun to fly around in an STO. Yes, they are. I have one on my Rami. Although I actually, I had that one, and I, got a, I, got, I replaced his ship with another ship that's even bigger fuck-off engineering ship, actually. I think I had the biggest ship in the Romulan fleet on my Rami. I will show you yeah. this first. Show us this first. Ah, the D. Very nice. Reactions, Aeon? Yeah. Nice. Now, also. you see the thing under it? Hi. Yes. Just to give you an idea of how big that production model is, and I will tell you exactly how big it is. DS9? No. The thing under it is this. No. Nice. That's how big the D model Holy is. Holy mackerel. That is a six-foot-long Enterprise D. Well, you could tell how big it was because there were people on the up, on the upper catwalk that you could see in the other shot. It was obvious how big it was. Yeah. But yeah, when I saw this shot, I was like, "Oh, I gotta take a shot of the bridge thing from up here." Well, that's, well, that's the kind that's the kind of de that's the kind of detail that for a lot of the exterior stuff that it was doing, the opening and closing of hangar doors, the attachment of various aliens and things to and from the ship, that mm -hmm. thing I mentioned earlier with the board cut a section of it out, they had to pull it out with a tractor beam, all that kind of stuff. Now, I have two slightly different angles for this one. Fun fact, I don't know if it was that one, but I know one of those one of those D models was ended up um, – I read a story. One of those D models ended up somewhere in a, in a storage locker somewhere all you know, decrepit, and everybody thought it was lost, and then somebody found it in a storage unit somewhere. Nice. As I was saying, I have two different angles for this one. Yeah, just a tick. Yeah. Okay, nice. What Do you, you know see which on that my is? screen the moment yeah, that's, uh, is that, the that, original that, series. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's the E. That is the that's E. That's the Enterprise yes. E. Yes, yes, it is. Talk to you what the hell happened to your video. Yeah. He's lagging. No, he put up a, he put up a Google I've, picture of that. Well, I, lagging? Another shot. Mm. Oh, yeah. The uh, 23rd century hyperspray. Yep. Which is what was Fair in the top left corner of that Tost era gear. Yeah. Fair enough. And here's the second image of it. I crouched nice. down because I wanted to get a shot with the deflector dish. Mm. Nice. Nice. They also had this one. Yes, I know it's blurry. Let's see if you can identify it. Let's take a look. Need to look to light. 
That's the uh, it's either the Enterprise B or the Excelsior. That is the Enterprise B. And you could tell it's not the Excelsior because if you look at the shape of the ship, it's clearly not the Excelsior. I could have sworn the Excelsior is a similar design. It's the same class of ship, but yeah. the Enterprise B is boxier and longer. Like look at the nacelles. The Enterprise B's nacelles are far longer than the Excelsiors. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. That is the Enterprise B. I'm assuming Fair that's enough. the model they used for generations. Fair enough. Most likely. And then Especially the final like model. Six foot long. And the final one they had hanging over the exhibition floor. Ah, DS9. Yeah. By far the largest Terror model they no had one. hanging over the, the exhibition floor. Yeah, if they weren't careful of that, could probably kill someone if it fell. Yep. Terrachnor. That'd be one. Terrachnor. I'm going to take a wild That's guess. It's probably... I'm going to take a wild guess. It's probably also Empachnor. Possibly. But as you probably have guessed, we are now on the second oh, floor yeah, of the course. exhibition, which was not nearly as large as the first floor. Well, yes, because they had a giant atrium with these giant models hanging in it. Yes. A doy. So, so I thought this was cool, so I took pictures of all the screens because I thought this was fucking awesome. Nice. Loading, loading, loading. The OS Enterprise on the loading. L cars. You'll notice it is the original TOS Enterprise, not the movie one. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Is Aeon caught up over there? Loading. Yeah, I can see it. Loading. And this was the next one. The D. Sweet. Loading. And now the thing in the lower right hand corner is actually a little video screen nice. that showed a video of the thing. So I actually waited until I got a good <laughs> shot from the clip they were using and then I took the picture. Nice. And nice. as you could tell probably if if you are Star Trek nerd, that's the opening crawl from Star Trek the Next Generation. Yep. yep. And we have... We have... What's next, the X9? The E. Ooh, the E. Nice. Yep, and that's the beauty pass so from the opening blast. of the movie. Sweet. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool that they had this stuff up here. So there, i got to take pictures of these. We have... That's awesome. Let's see. This one. Oh, a Klingon D7. Indeed. D7 battle cruiser. Has it loaded for Taji? Yeah, I'm just waiting for Voyager to pop up. <laughs> okay, there are two more. Okay. Ah, D Space 9. Yep, Taji called it. Yep. As I loaded for Aeon over there. Yeah, I can see the. Uh, yeah. That's also the, the. That's also the DS9 <laughs> shot from the opening crawl, is it not? Yes. Yeah. Then. The Excelsior. Excelsior. Why the Excelsior? Seems random. Because the Enterprise B was an Excelsior class. Hmm, okay. I don't see why they wouldn't have used like. Voyager. Now, you'll notice the interesting thing. Look at the blueprint shot of it. Yeah. That's not the Excelsior. Yeah, huh? Okay. That, that's the that's Enterprise B. Bay. Ah. The B, Enterprise B version of the Excelsior class. Yeah. And you'll notice the shot in the lower right-hand corner, that's the B. And the way you can tell, and I'm glad I got this particular shot, you can tell this Enterprise B. Look at the neck of the ship. 
the bee has a thicker neck. The, end, the Excelsior's neck isn't that high. It's not that tall. It's more – the saucer's more flush against the um, against the star drive, whereas the bee actually has a neck. Hmm. The Excelsior was originally an experimental starship built to test a new high-speed drive. The drive never worked. Later, the ship would be commanded by Captain Sulu. Correct. Ooh, the yes, Excelsior was, yes. Yeah, the uh, trans yeah, the NX two thousand had the trans warp drive sabotaged by the guy who designed it. Scotty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I ran so of into you where to hit it. I ran into an exhibit showing Star Trek throughout pop culture and stuff. Okay. I only took a couple of pictures because I didn't, you know, it's like it's all product stuff. I'm like a lot of stuff we've already seen, but two things I was like, okay, I need to take pictures of this. And this is the first one. Okay. Okay. What? Star Trek Monopoly. <laughs> I had to. I was like, that's cool. Uh, Spock on a cereal um, box. Yes, and you can see Spock on a cereal box and among other things over there. I was primarily trying to get the Monopoly thing, but yeah, I got the other stuff too. Ha! Huh, Jeff, top left, it's a copy of John Scalzi's Red Shirts book that I read to you. Ha! Huh, yeah, it is. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And I was... I do believe... Yeah, I've got a copy of Star Trek Monopoly, I do believe. I do believe it's probably just hiding out back somewhere. Now. You do believe, you do believe. No, I know I've got a copy of Star Trek. I know I've purchased a copy of Star Trek Monopoly at one point. Nice. Now this one I had to get a picture of because I was like, wow, this stuff actually exists. Loading, loading, loading. Let's see here. <laughs> There's a can of Romulan Ale Energy Blood Drink. Wine. A Klingon Blood Wine and some other kind of Klingon drinks. It's Klingon beer. Ah, Klingon beer. Hey, Neelix's Star Trek and cookbook. And Neelix's cookbook. Yeah. But I was like, wait, they actually made blood wine and Romulan ale energy drink? Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm relatively sure that at least at one point in time you could also get a bottle of Chateau Picard. Would not surprise me. Now, this one is going to be a series of three images. Okay. And let's see if you can tell me what it actually to, is. To quote Wolf, mm -hmm. Romulan Ale should be illegal. It ha, is. It is. <laughs> now, actually, this first shot kind of ironic considering what has happened recently that this is the, the shot I got for the first one. But there's a reason I took the three series of shots, and you may see why. But that's the first one. Okay, load them up. Anton Yelchin. That's Chekhov. Yeah. And Jim, you see it okay? Do we lose Jim? If Jim Billy Boy Bob's there. Jim disappeared. Damn Jim. He's probably probably finagling with the PS4 or something. Or he got called away. Damn it! This was supposed to be more for him than anyone else. God damn it. Like plugging the cable. Uh, 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 I have to go. Okay, well, video break. <laughs> I guess. Uh, come on, Jim, don't leave us hanging. How dare Jim go missing in the middle don't of the let me down. I'm here. Where the hell did you go? My phone rang, sorry. Are you good now? So as I was saying, I have a series of three photos, and this first one's kind of ironic considering things that have happened that I happened to get in on this one, but there you go. Mm. Let 
like I said, Anton Yelchin's check Yep. But that wasn't the reason I took that photo. That just happened to be what was on the screen. Um, okay. We have this one. Mm-hmm. Kirk. Kirk. Chris Bond. And we have this one. Yeah. Picard. Now, can anyone tell me why I took that series of three images? Because it's a three-part screen that comes Maybe. around. Exactly. I wanted to illustrate how massive that fucking screen was. And I couldn't get the whole screen because my back was literally mm. up against the wall. It was a tier two Fair scene enough. arrangement in front of the screen. And uh, I had a, it was a documentary about Star Trek and about Star Trek in like – um. Well, how it's pervaded our culture and our lives and stuff, because obviously this right. was in the, right off the uh, pop culture area. Yeah, it's actually a really fascinating documentary because um, they had the dire uh, Google's director of like research or something. Yeah. Um, it was an Indian guy, and they had him talking about how Star Trek pretty much um, inspired him to go into his career, and, and um, nice. it's actually kind of interesting because he's like. Basically, his entire dream for his – basically, his past 25-year career here so far has been to recreate the Enterprise's computer. <laughs> he wants the computer that will talk to you that you can talk to it and get answers from. And lo and behold, what does Google have? So he's kind We're of half achieving his dream right now. Kind of. Uh, I remember – Siri is Apple. Cortana is Microsoft. What's the Google's one? It's just Google. Uh, hello, Google? Pretty yeah. much. Google? Yeah, I wanted to show how Tell massive me, that's really all it is. was. Massive. Yeah. Um, and I also put this in here so I could also talk about the fact that they had like different smaller like TV screens littered throughout the exhibits um, with like, either, like little documentaries or talking about certain things. They're showing you know, scenes from Star Trek and whatnot, and they had a couple of interactive ones where you could put on a headset and make some choices. Like they had, um, they had Measure of a Man on one of them. Nice. And um, you know, they would ask you, so do you think robots have a right to, you know, do you think robots are alive, basically? It's a question asked in Measure of a Man, and they ask you why you chose that, and you see the percentages of who chose what and stuff. It was kind of cool. So they did have some interactivity here, some pretty good interactivity. Nice. And we have... No. Nice. And I had to take a picture of this. Follow the director's prompts. Watch and share the final scene. More to quote. We didn't have the budget forces because we could transport our device and beam them down to the planet, which allowed us to be well into the story by script page two. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's basically the whole reason the transporter exists. It's because they didn't have the budget to land the ship. Mm. That's the only reason the transporter and exists. Then, and then lighter ships, they explain why they don't land the ship. Because it's yep. too fucking hard, or it could be self destructive if it tries to take off and also a gravity bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, 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 unless you're, uh, yeah. Unless it's landed, you're on, it ain't going to be taken off sometimes. Yeah. Un unless you're on the Voyager, apparently. Yeah, smaller ships can land. I mean, come on. In Abrams' Trek, they fucking landed the Enterprise, so don't give me that shit. Well, depending on your definition, strictly speaking, in, um, a stri um, Oh, what the hell one was it? Strictly speaking, of generations they landed the D. <laughs> <laughs> True, but yes, the production reason why transporters exist. Price landed. A, a, they didn't have the budget to land the ship. B, they didn't have the time within the story to land the ship. Yeah, that makes sense. They needed a quick cut, so they were like, "Yeah, transport." So I thought, that was, no, yeah, I got a, a picture of that because that's kind of funny. That is kind of funny. <laughs> now. Yeah. And actually, Voyager did land a few times, but there were issues with it. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this will work. 
because we are yeah. coming to now, the end. Like, yeah. like, like, like the time they like the time they landed and they found a room full of people from the fi- from the 1950s that were cryogenically frozen, and then they woke them up. If this worked, let's say no. That was the 37th. Nine. It was the 1930s. 37ers. Okay, I was off. If that this was works, to two, quote one two, of our favorite the, people. The 37ers. If this works, to quote one of our favorite people, we have video. I have not seen said video because my father was the one taking the video. So hopefully this will work. Here we go. Are you getting the audio for it too? We are getting no audio. Okay, there's okay. you. You're on a transporter pad. I am on a transporter pad. Okay. Camera's over there. Yeah, because you're supposed to be seeing what's on the screen. Okay. There you go. Now it's lit up. You can see it. But he's pointing at me. And he'll, he'll go between me and the screen, I think. Okay. I'm trying to do the Kirk pose where he's got his left shoulder out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they beamed you out. That was cool. There you are. Yeah, it... Ah, Where the hell are you? Some random corridor, apparently. I beamed over to a ship. Ah. Yeah, I was going to say, you didn't beam over to the Citadel, did you? No. Basically, it's I beam over to the ship, destroy its warp core, and beam out. Okay, then. Yeah, supposedly there's supposed to be three scenarios. Only one of them was active, so that was kind of disappointing. Hmm. Yeah, those scenarios can be difficult. I heard some upshot student hacked one of them. <laughs> what? Did he believe in the no-win scenario? <laughs> <laughs> you are not James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was the last thing I did at the Star Trek thing. Okay, then. It was kind of a yeah. They had a mock, um, mocked up, you know, transporter. You got, you went up on it, select the scenario you wanted. Um, I was holding like basically a wooden phaser with, or maybe a plastic one with like a trigger on it, and it emitted a light on the front. It, basically, I was holding a Sony Move. Okay, then. That's effectively what it is. It was a that, phaser with a light on it, and that's what emitted the phaser beam in the video. It makes was sense. Move. <laughs> that's cool. Which sucked for some people because one of the phasers stopped working partway through, so whoever got that one never emitted a phaser beam because mm. the light never in- ignited. Oh, dear. Yeah, that kind of sucked. But I thought that was kind of cool. You're like, you get a transport experience, and you get to basically be a Star Trek character because um, you couldn't hear the audio, but in the video scenario, there was actually a female director talking to you telling you what to do. Ah, nice. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Um, Sweet. Nice. So, yes, plenty of interactivity there. But I had a lot of fun at this event, um, despite the fact it wasn't overly large. I think it was about the right size. And it's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's from Paul Allen's private collection, so there probably wasn't yeah. going to be a whole hell of a lot there. I, I was actually yeah. really impressed by what was there. And it was just—it was really cool to see, you know, the props, the models, yeah. the the uniforms, and actually learn some things about Star Trek, like about why the transporter actually exists. Yeah, that's pretty neat. You know, and god damn, that D was massive. Holy crap! That was a big D. <laughs> Ooh, boy! <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> but yeah, that 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 right there illustrates that yes, in fact, the Galaxy Class Starship is the largest starship in the fleet. <laughs> but if you're in the Seattle area, or you're going to be in the Seattle area during the summer here in the next within the next few months, you should definitely check it out. Um, it's not cheap, um, depending on your definition of cheap, because you have to pay for entry into the EMP, 
and then into the exhibit? Yep. The exhibit itself isn't that expensive. It's only five dollars extra to gain entry to the exhibit and the um, and the gift shop. Yes, they have a gift shop with some exclusives. Of course they do. I'm, con- I'm considering going back to get more from the gift shop. I don't know if they'll let me into that. I may have to buy tickets to get in because they actually have in the gift shop um a comic two pack. It's a Star Trek on one side, Star Wars on the other. But Why didn't suppose- you just buy it while you were there? Because I didn't want to spend too much money. But My you want to spend too much money now? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I kind of really want it because supposedly those covers are uh, exclusive variant covers to the exhibit. Of course they are. But um, but yeah, so there's a gift shop. But it's like I said, it's about five bucks to get into the exhibit. It's about for an adult. It's about. Twenty-five dollars to get into the EMP itself. Okay. Which, if you plan to check out the rest of the EMP, it's actually kind of worth it because there's a lot of different exhibits. There's like a Jimi Hendrix exhibit in there. There is an indie games exhibit sponsored by Nintendo in there. Nice. And among other things, mostly music stuff. But there's music. There's sci-fi, video games, mm-hmm. just Seattle culture basically. So it's it's a really awesome place to go into. Sweet. Um, there's a Wolfgang Puck restaurant in there. <laughs> well, okay. it's a cafe. Why, Wolfgang Puck cafe. Why not? But, yeah, why not? Why not? Um, that is what I say. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's a one of a kind experience celebrating the 50 years of Star Trek. So this isn't going to be around for very long. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff you won't get to see anywhere else. So, you know. And they do encourage taking photos, which yeah, I was surprised because I asked. Yeah. You know, I was like, "Is it all right if I take photos?" They were like, "Yeah, that's fine. Just don't use the flash." Okay, that's why I took photos of everything and video. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> why not? Go for it. So, if you're if you're a huge Star Trek fan of any of the series, because they have stuff from all the series, as you saw, and you're going to be in the Seattle area within, in the next few months. I don't know how long the exhibit's going to be there, um, but I'll, probably at least through the summer. You know. Do go check it out. It's worth it. Um, and especially if you're a fan of music, um, especially Seattle music, like they have a Jimi Hendrix exhibit, they have a Nirvana exhibit up in there. Um, that stuff. If you're into that kind of stuff, then it's totally worth the price of admission just to get into the EMP and then just pay the extra five bucks to go upstairs into the Star Trek exhibit. It's worth it. Nice. Um, so what did you guys think of my little tour through uh, the Star Trek exhibit? I like it. That was a lot of fun. Nice. Nice. So I'm kind of miffed you didn't get more Voyager stuff. Yeah. Well, there wasn't much more Voyager stuff to get. Yeah. Well, considering I've got all seven seasons on DVD, I'm only missing the season two original Maroon clamshell. I had to get the slimline case version of that. Mm. I don't know. You got Janeway's outfit. You got Seven's yeah. outfit. You got Janeway's chair. You got the Borg outfit. You got Neelix's cookbook. You got cookbook. the uh, region chamber. You got the region chamber. Yeah, most of the Borg yeah, stuff. But no Voyager. Voyager model. Yeah. yeah. No model of the NCC 74656. Yeah, well. It's not Enterprise. Then again, the NX01 mm-hmm. wasn't there, but still. Yeah. Well, if they had to have the NX01 there, then they should have had... The 1701C as well. Yeah. Uh, as noted by one of the TV stations, apparently the, the exhibit is running. Mm-hmm. Uh, as noted, the exhibit is running January. Oh, that's right. Okay. So you have until the end of the year. So, hey, if you know anyone coming into Seattle who's a huge Star Trek fan, buy them tickets for a Christmas present. <laughs> it's worth it. Indeed. And if by chance you can't get to that coast, but you're on this one, make sure you head over to the Intrepid Museum in New York City and check out the Star Trek uh, Starfleet Academy experience, which I hope to go to at some point before it ends on Halloween. Wait, so mine's running longer than yours? Yours is running longer than mine. That's a dude's private collection. This one is they're going to take this one on tour, so they need it. True. This is very true. Very true. But yes, I'm going to try to get to that. 
and also if you're going into the MP, if you're into video games, I do highly recommend checking out the indie games uh, ex exhibit by Nintendo. It's not overly huge, but it's pretty interesting because they have information in there about you know successful video games, and it's mostly video game consoles and indie games on them that you can play. But it's awesome. <laughs> Is it five dollars to get into that? No, that's no, part I... of the EMP. Okay. The only special exhibit is the Star Trek one. Everything else is okay. Stuff that's in there all the time. Gotcha. Yeah, and you can go onto their uh, website. I think it's EMPMuseum.org, and you can see what special events are going on and what exhibits they have there all the time. Indeed. And yes, so, it's EMPMuseum.org. You can also museum. Yeah. And also, if you're going to bring your father or your grandfather with you, I recommend mm -hmm. buying tickets online. I was an idiot and didn't do this. Because um well, if you're going to go anywhere, do it online because there is a senior discount which you get regardless, but if you go online, adults actually get in cheaper. Adults actually get the senior discount if you buy the tickets online. So if you're an adult and you're going, buy your tickets online. It'll save you like three bucks. That shouldn't affect you. You got the senior discount, right, right Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So let's see. That's a fat joke, an old joke. Uh, I just got a next few seconds. Got to work again. Ordering a salon. Okay, we're good to go. Funny. But yeah, so thank you both for joining me on this trip through Trek. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you for having us. It was quite a wonderful journey. Oh, hi. Thank you, Aeon, for uh, coming on at the last minute here. <laughs> Well, at least I gave you something to talk about to do whilst Jim Jim the convo. This is true. It was only for a minute. <laughs> Yeesh. But yes, I have been your host, Marcus Shadow. And uh, join us again at the... Well, I don't know if Anne will be joining us, but Jim and I at the end of this month when, when we review Star Trek Beyond. Yes. Nice Sunday to save the darkness. Yes, yeah. you do. That was a good movie. Yeah, you do. Fair enough. Um, and as a just a general reminder, you can get on Netflix. Yeah. Also, as a, as a general reminder, in case anybody hasn't picked up on it, um, given that this we have carried over here, Pens of Mind from the X Town, we are officially in the summer of Disney people. So uh, stay tuned for a, uh, all kinds of Disney reviews, all of which this year are related to theme parks. That's movies based on theme park attractions. That's uh, a few more Kingdom Keepers books that are set in the theme parks, and an actual review of Walt Disney World from Chris the Mole, who was going there, and I, who have been there before. Stay tuned for that in August. Indeed. Nice. Well, this stream has gone on for quite long enough, so I will just say good night, and I can't do the salute, but live long and prosper. There you go. Yeah, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm Kirk. I can't do it. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs>